in three to four weeks time me and some others are doing the penguin to cradle trail so multi-day bushwalks have been on my mind hence this video 10 tips for multi-day bushwalks if you've done a lot of multi-day walks in the past you probably won't find this very useful at all but if you're new to the bushwalking scene or new to multi-day walks then you know you might find this useful uh, there's no ranking to these 10 tips they're they're all pretty worthy of recognition in my opinion number one take the time to plan and prepare that's what I've been doing over the past few weeks, having a look on the internet, we're meeting up in a few days to plan the Penguin to Cradle. You know, it's really important to do, in my opinion, even if you're not the group leader. Uh, you know, it's important to get an idea of what conditions and terrain that you're going to face. And with the preparation, you know, you want, you want to make sure all your gear is in working order before you leave, make sure all the batteries are charged, let someone know of your intentions, make gear and food lists. It all helps to make the actual walk itself a better experience. Number two, don't skimp on important gear. You know, things like tents, sleeping bags, food, toilet paper, carrying enough water. It's so important to have all of these on you and, and not to go with the cheap option. You know, thinking about like Kmart tents and stuff like that. You know, you don't want to take that out into the southwest wilderness of Tasmania. You know, if bad situations arise, you want to be prepared and have the best gear. Number three, be flexible with your plans. You don't want to go into a walk and have a rigid itinerary that you have to follow. You know, you might get caught up in bad weather or be slow, find the terrain trickier than you expected. So it's important to realise you have to pull up early, you can change your itinerary around, allow an extra day or two if need be and carry that food as well. Number four, ensure essential items are easy to access. So I'm talking about items such as a raincoat or a first aid kit or a locator beacon, tent, gloves. If these items are required suddenly, you know, you want to be able to reach them quickly. Now, there's no point having them, especially something like a locator beacon, if they're buried at the bottom of your pack when time is of the essence. Number five, take essential gear with you on side trips. You never know when you might encounter a snake or break your ankle on a tree root, you know, or get caught in a torrential downpour. So even if it's only a minor detour, you know, maybe like a five, ten minute detour out to the peak, it's worthwhile putting a small pack together with the essential gear inside in case the worst situation happens. Number six, don't keep gear on the outside of your pack. This is asking for trouble if you do this in my opinion. You know, items can get caught and snagged on vegetation and be damaged or become wet quite easily. I think a good example are those foam mattresses a lot of people use where chunks can be ripped off easily if it gets caught on a branch. If you don't have enough space in your pack, get a bigger pack or smaller gear. That's my take on it. The only item I keep on the outside of my pack is a drink bottle and even then that can fall out if you're scrub bashing. Number seven, keep your food in a tightly sealed dry bag. Native wildlife love exploring popular campsites as I've learnt the hard way. I'm talking about the peeling trip as I've mentioned a lot of times to be honest. By keeping a food in your dry bag you drastically reduce the likelihood of animals smelling your supplies and raiding your tent. Now I point to when I was at Dixon's Kingdom last year I had my food in a dry bag and didn't have any encounters there with animals. Some people like to hang food up on cord between trees as well and you know if it rains the dry bag keeps everything dry as well. That's an added bonus I guess. Number eight, take a spare change of clothes for camp. There's nothing worse than wearing wet clothes is there. You know you get to the end of the day and you have to stay in the wet clothes and if you leave them on it could lead to hypothermia in poor conditions let's face it. So having that dry change of clothes put on for camp improves everything, your mood, your mindset, your warmth, it's something I've started doing on every multi-day walk. It really should be an essential piece of item in my opinion. Number nine, pick your campsite well. So looking for flat surfaces might seem like a no-brainer but the sleep is so much better when it's flat, ideally sheltered as well. Get an idea of what the wind is doing if you're somewhere exposed because the orientation of your tent is important in some, for some tents. Uh, they work better if they're facing a certain way. Uh, you know, you want to look for trees at risk of falling in high winds and avoid them. We want to avoid ants nests, large tree roots, and setting up in depressions or too close to creeks because that could result in your tent getting flooded. And number 10, might sound like a bit of a joke, but take hand sanitizer. And I'm not just saying that because of the pandemic we're going through at the moment. It, if you want to avoid gastro, then hand sanitizer is going to prove extremely beneficial. Fortunately, I haven't been in that situation where I've had gastro on a walk, but I know a lot of people who have. And there are 10 tips for multi-day bushwalks. Do you think they're useful? Are there any other things you think I've missed? Let me know down below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next video.